that I was sorry about the other day, running away from you like that. I'm sorry. Didn't you bring your mom? Now that I'm seven, she lets me out alone. Oh? Anyway, I'm sorry about running away. That really was seven years old, wasn't it? I can understand that. Can I come in? Sure. Like they say, uh, if I'd known you were coming... Did you bake the cake? But I got no kitchen here. <laughs> I know. I would have figured out something. Look at this room. It's a mess. Ah, look at me. I'm a mess, too. Would you like to have me take you out someplace? Hey, you don't have to do that. I know. Well, I'll help you. Looks kind of strange, doesn't it? You're doing something together? Yeah. But it's nice. You mean it? I guess we've been inside. I've always wanted a father. Now I've got one. It's great. I like your face. Somebody should have told me I had a princess in town. I might have come back a day or two sooner. A day or two? Well, could you believe a couple of years? I wish you had. You knew I was here. But I didn't know what you were like. You could have found out. Look, if I take you out for lunch, it's on one condition. That we talk about us. You and me. Just us. You don't have to buy me lunch. I'd love to on these two sandwiches. How about I just make you one right here? Sure, go ahead, but I don't want you to think that uh, I can't afford it. I'm not penny-minded about money. No cracks about mom, please. No cracks intended, honest. If I want to take you out for lunch, it's because I want to buy you a lunch. If I can't afford it, I won't take you out. No. Your mother never did understand about money. See, you sell something, you make a dollar, and you put it in your pocket until, uh, well, you run across a princess. Then you take out your dollar and buy her lunch. It's elementary. But your mother never could get that dollar out of her pocket. Well, let's not talk about mom, okay? Tell me something, just for my information. Did she ever buy any pretty clothes? Or well, just for kicks? Just because you were young and sweet? Well, he's plenty. Oh, honey, come on. Well, he needs a new dress every five minutes. I'm not talking about needing one. I'm talking about wanting one. Party dresses, having your nails done every once in a while, just for fun. How much money did she give you for that? Enough. Rita. I think I'd better keep going. She didn't give you enough, did she? Well, we weren't rich. I bet you were the poorest dressed kid in school. I bet you walked around embarrassed. Between the time you were 13 and when you got married. Stop it. What's the truth, isn't it? What are you protecting her for? Well, she is my mother. I'm your father. Oh, are you? Are you really? Well, how come you walked out on us? You abandoned us. You left her with a kid in a rundown bar where awful people hang out. She did send you up here, didn't she? She did not. She set you against me, against your own father. And then she sent you up to spy. That's about the lowest. She asked me not to see you. She thought I might like you. You get away from that door. Rita, please. Thank you. 
Yeah, I'm okay. Why not put this in your vase, just for starters, huh? Wait a minute, do you have an appointment? If not, why not? That's right, Mr. Allen. It's one of our most popular fabrics. That's why we've had to run off a special order. But you'll get a shipment day after tomorrow, for sure. That's not good. I wouldn't be sure about getting a shipment if I were that party. You're a rotten businessman, Mac. What are you doing here? You don't return phone calls, you don't act on a good tip. I don't think you know the first thing about a business deal. When I want to do business with you, I'll let you know. Meanwhile, stop calling me and don't con your way into my office. Well, I suppose the mill just about runs itself by now, hmm? But, uh, other operations. You see, Ray, certain deals are fragile. And if somebody gives you a tip, you have to move before they get smashed to pieces. You know what I mean? No, I don't. Oh, come on, Les. Don't con a con, man. I gave you some potent information about the future of Mrs. Payton. Now, for some reason or other, you want me to believe that uh, it didn't impress you. You've told me a lot of things since you've been back, Eddie. None of them impressed me. Yeah, well, that's too bad. You see, that's what I mean about a business head. You're not using yours. The way you're used to it. I'm using it right now. I'm calling the security officer if you don't get out of my office. Oh, <laughs> come on. I don't think you'd do that. We got a lot in common. You know, we got kids that are married to each other. You're running that into the ground, Eddie. That's true. We both want the same thing for our kids. Hmm? I knew there was something I wanted to tell you. What now? There was something I forgot to tell you about good old Jack Forrest. Chandler, what about him? Something about a gun. You know, it seems that somebody slipped him a gun while he was still in jail here. And can you beat that? And that's how he escaped. Gee, Les, you don't look too well. But I suppose you big-time executives are under a lot of pressure, huh? Chandler told me that. The game is over, Harrington. I'm not asking you anymore. I'm telling you. We're partners. We're in this thing together, you, me, and the kids. Now, there's a lot of money coming out here. And we don't want to lose it just because the future Mrs. Payton wants to grab it, do it. We've got to make plans, partner. Lots of plans. <laughs> I came to give you a chance to apologize. Apologize? Yes. For your, your aggressive behavior on the beach. There I was, poor little me, defenseless, just a piece of driftwood. Get up, dear. She's pretty, young, far more accessible. I said, oh, no, me not. The secretary isn't deaf, is she? Worried about the repetition? No, yours. Don't bother. Did she say so? Somebody's neurotic. I wish I'd never met you. No, you don't. And I wonder why. You know, it's more than just a man being attracted to a woman. It's something else. It bothers me a little. 
with him in the complex. And you tuck with a finishing school, you're a snob among snobs. I belong to your grandson. Is that it? This has nothing to do with it. I'm a very common, common man. Who would much rather destroy than be destroyed by some bored society butterfly. Why would I want to destroy you, Stephen? I like you. Well, that's your opinion. Now, some people put notches in guns, others collect scalps. How do you remember your victims? You are a very common, common man. Well, then leave me alone. No. Happily married, man. Happily married. Oh, no, you weren't. Really? Then you tell me about my marriage. I saw that touching little embrace in the living room. That's right. After our meeting, you guiltily took the little wife out to dinner, and then you guiltily tried Shut to... up. But you tried too hard, didn't you? She wasn't having any of it, was she? Not at first. I never bothered to trust my wife with you. And all of a sudden, she gave in. Didn't she find that rather strange? So abrupt? Well, that's enough. You don't think it had anything to do with her seeing me on the stairs? Watch it. Stay away from me. Oh, for Friday. I'll be in Boston tomorrow. By the way. the continuing story of Peyton Place. You're not telling me Adrian's going to Boston. You're telling me my husband. And you want me to run off and... Well, I'm not going. I trust you. I don't want to take a chance. But she's going to be all right, isn't she? If there's any way that I could help, you can. By just leaving her alone. Unconditionally. I never have been. I am not now and never intend to be anyone's victim. <laughs> 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 